I'm out here fishing with Jerry and Brian, Brian's buddy. Hoping to learn a lot. It's gonna be a good day. Look what we created. Skycomish sunrise in tree. Nice. Skycomish sunrise. From Mr. McLeod. Cast. No. Men back. Pull back, men. And it de it'll release the tension, allow the sink tips to start slicing down get into the zone, and then lower in under tension, control the swing, broadside. Especially dirty hose, intruders, large profile flies, in my mind, meant for that, show them it this way, rather than this. That's where maybe doing some more GoPro footage underwater, watching the fly on the swing, might dispel some of that. Maybe, maybe I'm fooling myself and and no matter what, the fly is going to do what it's going to do, however, or not. Like that'd be a, that'd be a good experiment. Well, they say it's the fish of a thousand casts. Twenty thousand casts. There's a thousand casts in 2009. Now it's. 10,000 casts was 2016. Now we're at 20,000 casts. This next swing, one in 20,000. There you go. I, I think this is... I think the odds are Very better. similar to like hitting the jackpot on a slot machine in a casino. Yeah. Every cast is a pull on the machine. Chink. It'll be that cast too. Put ching ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, that's still heading. Ultra squid that's been living on my dash. And I saw it as I was parking this morning. I was like, you know, that's about right. It's black, it's blue, it's got a little white. That's sweet, dude. And it wiggles. I love that. This river is probably the most magical place to rock him. Well, that's kind of, over the years, I discovered things that I liked and learning what that action was, that was kind of the key to it. And it's like a medium, fast, progressive action. There's been a few rods that were my favorite and that's what they had. And so it was easy to basically just decide, I know I like this. The hard part was knowing as far as lengths and stuff, right? Figuring out lengths that actually worked or lengths that I prefer. Jeff Pierway is a pretty progressive thinker. And he had this action, this X-Series action. And he handed it, a rod to me one day on the Sandy, at the Sandy Spaclave. I went down and fished it and I fell in love with it immediately. It was just buttery and crisp and it had really nice recovery. But, you know, it was 13.6. And I really don't like a rod over 12 feet. I think that... Where I like to fish, develop that. Okay. The length of the rod and the length of the head. and like Yep, it was absolutely, mother of invention was definitely necessity. Because we found ourselves, like all the open bar stuff here, you know, it's pretty cool, but there's tons of plug water that's all high banks and branches and big rocks and no back casting room. Fishing those effectively, granted the, sh the casts are a lot shorter, but we were throwing some big junk. So we still needed to be able to be, you know, have a rod that was the right length, right weight, and you know, somewhat biomechanically efficient, right? Yeah. Because swinging big rods all day long is not a very pleasant way to spend many days of fishing. And so it just became really obvious that these were better tools as far as what we were doing. We ran off with it, you know, then they started making switch rods and 
it was, you know, we played with lots of them. Every brand out there, if they made a rod that appealed to us, we'd get one. And so fast forward a little bit, that situation with Jeff Pierway, I'm in a position where I can do something about it now. And I asked him, can you make that X series action, you know, 12 feet and shorter? And he was like, oh yeah, no problem. Six, eight months after we had the initial conversation, I had these prototypes in my hand with a little bit different cork configuration. That's all we had to change. And that's what you got is this, you know, it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Absolutely. And it, you know, it, okay. The more I did it, the more I guided, the more time I spent on the river teaching people how to do this, it was pretty obvious that, that going back to the biomechanical efficiency of it, it is vastly superior. I mean, it, it's, you know, I had clients that were physically, you know, limited and they could functionally fish this rod for days and days on end and be successful. And then, you know, I meet someone like Doug that is, you know, very similar minded and he's, you know, he's been doing this stuff forever and he's a super fishy dude and he knows what he likes and he liked these rods, you know, and that means a lot to me in the respect that, you know, I don't, I don't just assume that because i am got all this experience that I know anything. I've just, I've always looked at this sport as every day I'm gonna get to learn something, you know? And if I kept an open mind and just cruised with it, I would figure things out, you know, stayed consistent. And, you know, Doug just came along and made it really clear that this could appeal to a lot of other people, you know, because I'm just one person with this opinion about stuff and you know, if it, it works for me, it doesn't necessarily mean other people are gonna like it. Yeah, and you know, there's also the part that's like, you know, not everybody's the same. And there's, the truth is, is that casting these things is really fun. And, and, and it, you know, I understand people getting kind of pigeonholed into the big rods because it's, it's really satisfying, you know, and that, you know, you can't assume that everybody thinks that this would be a better tool, you know. There's definitely going to be people that it would be like, I could tell them why I think this is a better tool, and then maybe it'll turn on a little light for them, and then they'll be like, I'll give that a try, you know. And then they're like, I really like this. This is really cool. But it's only because they didn't know about it before, you know. And you consider where I come from and what I've done. It's like, these are the types of rivers I fish. You know, this is the stuff I love. I'm, I'm a big river guy. I love big rivers. I love moving fish. That's, I'm happy to go through the motions. It's like, you know, it's meditation. It's my church. You watch a dude plug down a high bank and, you know, just catch a few steelhead and you're like, oh boy. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, yeah, because it was, it was 10 or 12 for the day, you know. And so it was like, well, heck, we should fish over there you know, and then the evolution of the intruder. And then, you know, you start to other rods. The next thing you know, you, you've got a, um, you got something that's freaking working here, you know, and you're, you, it's completely different than what everybody else is doing. I mean, all of our peers were standing on the bar with big, huge rods, you know, and we're, we're fishing plug water, <laughs> right? We're fishing plug water. And, you know, we were lucky enough that there was, we met Scott Howell guiding. I met Ed Ward, you know, all of us hung out together and we, the, those three minds were all totally hyper-focused on the exact same thing. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. It's a nice muddler minnow. <laughs> Oh yeah, going muddler. <laughs> yeah, baby. That, that loss of ego, man, that thinking that you are something outside of any given moment. Like, yeah. Like, no, we're actually just standing here walking up the river. Maybe. <laughs> right, exactly. Enjoying looking at the beautiful rocks. I 
grew up in Portland. Oh, man, Locked Ken's Alfred. Bakery. What's that? You hitting Ken's Bakery? What's Ken's Bakery? Oh, I know all the spots in these cities, man. <laughs> yeah, well, Ken's Bakery. <laughs> Tell me more. Do you like cooking? Yeah, we cook. Do you like cooking? <laughs> <laughs> I think most people who have swung for steelhead understand you don't have to really put it into words. I know, it's really hard to explain to people that don't fish. You're like, I'm going fishing. They're like, again? Yeah. <laughs> Not the third time. Don't you week. let him go? Probably hunting beavers. What's this? Probably hunting beavers. I'm gonna go to like a 2-4 tip or something. I'm all, this getting a little short. That reminded me yesterday, Blake. Blake. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had a fly on like that. It might have been <laughs> 10 inches <laughs> Sets up really good. It's nice, soft, kind of resting water on the inside. Main current pushing up on the outside. Like any fish that was swimming up river would want to either be moving, take a little break off in this easier water, swim up through here, or hold in the sea. It's nice and deep out there. Journey back begins. Worked a pretty good ways down this thing. How did the whole sink tip thing kind of start? Cause I know it was big two handers and it was like European floating lines, right? Or was it full, like full sinking lines came in before the tips or? The tips, yeah, dudes were lopping up full sink sections and just making stuff. There were dudes, there was a time where you would find a 15 foot sink tip, hook one on a regular basis. And I mean, a 15 foot sink tip, can you imagine the belly in that thing? <laughs> in that slow water? And trust me, I was there because a bunch of those sink tips were mine. So that, that learning curve was, you know, everybody was making it, but some people like, I sternly believe that a 10 foot tip with the proper structure is all you need. It is all you need because you can go tungsten longer leader and just get a whoosh that's clean and straight. And anywhere in there, it get picked up, you stand a chance of finding it. That whole short sink, sink tip thing, that was a big deal to us because for us, our flies that far down and weighted and as sparse as they were, we understood that line of sink, you know, and a losing the fly, that was a big deal. It was. I mean, wading, getting totally soaked. Man, that was one of the best ones I've ever tied. Yeah. You would not lose it. And when you did, it was, everybody was mad about it. I mean, by the time we were building those lines, we were all fishing different stuff. We had settled in on the intruders and trust me, we fished them a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of religiously for steelhead, but we dialed sizes way back. Nice one. Look at that. That's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right on, man. That's a PB bull right there for me. Yeah, man. That's a handy, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Nice, man. Yeah. Hey, dude. 
dude, you could step in right here. Yeah. Thanks, bud. Of course. Yeah, it's just good to feel like we're talking about the tug, man. It doesn't matter what's at the other end, just that line comes tight, the drag clicks, there it is. The excitement of yep. seeing it. It's like, oh, what is it? What is it? Yeah, dude. <laughs> I think I see. Nice, dude. Long and skinny. All right. You earned it. First fish. Yeah, <laughs> Get some. Nice, dude. Thanks for letting me use your rod. Oh, yeah. That was rad. Got a pole. I think it's pulled pretty good they for its size. Good. Yeah. yeah. They pull hard. I'll do the same thing. Can I catch your rod? Dude? Yeah, of course. It's a wee one. I can, tell by the, I can tell by the head shape. Yeah. Not, not as high horsepower. Yeah, not as high horsepower. Oh, Musa, you're up. Yeah. Nice, yeah, dude. dude. Sweet, dude. Oh, he grabbed it again. <laughs> he got the fly. <laughs> yeah, it was sweet. Good battle. Yeah. Oh yeah, 18 pounds. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.